Isaiah chapter 57. Philemon, the 57th book of the Bible. The righteous perish. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believe in shall not perish. They go away. In the eyes of a lost man, he just goes to the grave as anybody else. He has no idea where the soul goes. And no man lays it to heart. There are Christians today that died and you don't know where they are and who they were. And merciful men are taken away. None consider that the righteous is taken away from the evil to come. This would be why, example why, one example, why babies die. Because God may know something in their life, the evil to come. When a baby is born, God knows everything. And there are just some cases that it'd be better the Lord take that baby home without sin, where God can't impute sin to that child. Where merciful God, and it may not seem merciful to the parents and to the family. But death happens. Death happens every single day. The wages of sin is death. And outside the Lord tarrying with the rapture, if the Lord tarries, we're going to die. And who's really going to care? I know, as far as Christians uh, I go to church with, there'll be some neighborhoods, you know, they won't be bothered. There'll be some places on the streets, they'll probably be happy they're gone. But in reality, listen, after someone dies, it's a terrible thing, but you know, the memories go away. Their names go away. And if you don't believe me, go to an old, old, find the oldest cemetery you can where you live. And in that cemetery, find the oldest section in that cemetery. Where the old graves are. And for about a week, just sit there. And see who comes visit the grave. Now, maybe one out of a hundred, someone will faithfully still come to that grave, but there's, there's in Norwich, Connecticut, where we were when we did Baptist history, there's a whole cemetery, and there are famous people of God who have been buried, and you don't know where they are because their graves were of wood. And decayed or just buried without a marker he shall enter into peace death is peaceful it's not the great it's not and we're talking about the righteous we're talking about the merciful when you Step out of his body and be present with the Lord. That's it. There is no more pain. There is no more suffering. There's no more bills. The only thing you will have, I can see by the Bible and maybe other things, you will have tears. They're not wiped away to after the great white throne judgment. And Paul said to one of the churches, "Race, you know, I want to be home. I want to go back to be with the Lord. But it is needful I be here for you. And the fact is, we need to realize every day we wake up, God has use for us. We ought to keep our vessels clean. 
And then when God's all done with us, then he'll take us home. And there are times, we, I know stories about, you get young preachers who start a big work and they die young. They die just as they get the thing going. You guys say, look, why? The Lord knows. But his work is finished. God is not going to call us home to our work is finished. I have finished my cause. I have fought the good fight. I have kept the faith. Paul says to Timothy in a farewell. Now sometimes our own sins will make us die early. And we're finished with God because we have sinned and rebelled. They shall rest in their beds. Each one walking in his uprightness. When you're doing right. And you're at peace. You can sleep. You can sleep in turmoil when you're at peace. And everything's at the door. When you've done right and there's no guilt and your conscience doesn't need to be alerted, you can sleep. But draw near hither, ye sons of the sorceress. These people are not the right ones. The seed of the adulterer and the whore. We change paragraph. We change people. Against whom do ye sport yourselves? Make, make play. Make a show. Against whom make ye a wide mouth and draw out the tongue? Speaking too much, flapping in the gums. Are ye not children of transgression, a seed of falsehood? And the reference is sorcerer or sorcery, adultery, and whoredom. Children of magic, children of, uh, uh, of improper uh, spouses, and then children of women for hire. He calls it a transgression. He calls sorcery a transgression. That takes out one book in one book series and one movie series. Inflaming yourselves with idols under every green tree. The type of it would be like a grove. Going out in the woods to find God. Slaying the children in the valleys under the cliffs of the rocks. Murdering children is nothing new. America does it before the child's born. Israel was doing it after they were born. The adultery and the whore. Why would I want children? I didn't want them. I wanted a pleasure. So what do you do? You get rid of them. Molech. And you call it to a sacrifice to a god. I said a god. I didn't say the god. A god. It's amazing how you get rid of what things you don't want. It's amazing when a nation thinks children are a burden. And they're not. Among the smooth stones of the stream is thy portion. They that are they 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 are thy lot. Even to them hast thou poured a drink offering. Thou hast offered a meat offering. Should I, God, receive comfort in thee? They're having some kind of worship service with stones that are in a river. They're worshiping the rock, but it's not the rock. The weather stone or the weather rock. Pet rock. All the stuff that I grew up with as with a kid. Upon a lofty and high mountain hast thou set thy bed. 
you know, the, the, the little cartoon there, you know, you climb the mountain to the guru. You climb a mountain because that's closest to heaven. Why is everyone so interested in, cli in climbing a, uh, I can't even large mountain now. But why is everyone seeking to climb mountains? Because it's their way to get to heaven. They achieve something by climbing by their own works, their own ropes, their own shoes. Just like they did back in Genesis with the Tower of Babel. They built that tower to climb. Hast thou set thy bed, place to sleep, place to call home. Even thither wentest thou up, up, to offer sacrifice unto gods. By Isaiah, they have the temple. They have forsaken the temple to go in the mountain. Behind the doors also, and the posts, the homes, hast thou set up thy remembrance. Well, it's not God their remembrance, but thou hast discovered thyself to another than me. So it's a small G-O-D. In their house, in the mountains, under the trees, in the rivers. Through the house, to grandma's house we go. I think when she finally got to Grandma's house, I think she ran into a wolf. You know what the Bible says about a wolf? Little Miss Red, Red Riding Hood. And thou art gone up. Thou hast enlarged thy bed for more people. And bringing more people. And made thee a covenant with them, the people, and the gods. Thou lovest their bed where thou sawest it. Sleep. Thou wentest to the king with ointment. And didst increase thy perfume. And didst send thy messengers far off. And didst debase thyself even unto hell. These ointments, these perfumes, were for the folks' gods, and lead in the country astray. You know, when you go into some of these mystical bookstores, as soon as you walk in, is that smell of incense, the perfume. I mean, incense is not wrong, but how do you use it, and why do you use it? I mean, you do it because, you know, the house is musty and, you know, it's just been, you know, you got kids and dogs and throwing up and accidents and stuff like that. Okay. But if you're doing it to get in touch with your inner self and reach out to the spirit world and all that, such as the incense is used for. God had the use of the incense and it was only for a specific use by specific people. And notice how Isaiah speaks to the Holy Spirit about hell. There is a hell. And you are warned. I don't care what my Bible note says, Shiloh. It is H-E-L-L. -L. Thou art wearied in the greatness of thy way. Yet, says thou not, there is no hope. To them, they're, to them, they're doing all this worship. Why are we doing it? It ain't doing no, us no good. Why does somebody keep drinking, keep drinking, keep doing drugs, keep doing drugs? And they never say one time, you know what? All I'm doing is wasting my money. All I'm doing is wasting my time. It doesn't do me no good. They don't say there is no hope. They keep living it. They keep doing it. Thou hast found the life of thy hand. Therefore thou was not grieved. And of whom hast thou been afraid or feared? The fear of the Lord is the beginning, not them. That thou hast lied and hast not remembered me, God. So they're not fearing God. They say they do. 
and God calls him a liar, nor laid it to thy heart about God. Have not I, God, held my peace, God, God's peace, even of old? He's put up these people long-suffering. And thou fearest me, God, not. Why were they wicked? Because they didn't fear what God would do to them. I will declare thy righteousness, thy works. Ready? For they shall not profit thee. Imagine God saying, yes, this is what you did. This is, this is what is counted to you. This is what you brought. This is how you gave it. And you know what? It ain't going to do you no good. You could have went to Jerusalem three times a year, offered all the sacrifices to the complete T and done everything you want to, but if you didn't fear God, for they shall not profit thee. When thou criest, let thy companies deliver thee. Let the nations take care of you keep running to. You keep making alliances with them. You keep making a confederacy with them. Let them go take care of you. Let them help you. But the wind shall carry them all away. They're not going to have no help. Vanity shall take them. Nothing. But he that put his, his trust in me, God, shall possess the land. There's Israel. It's not about heaven. It's not about Jerusalem. It's the land. They're going to be kicked out of the land very soon they're going to be kicked out of the land in 70 AD they're going to run out of the land uh, at the great tribulation and shall inherit my holy mountain in the millennium so that colon there in 13 is a difference between the first and second advent that's a long period of time, that cold. And shall say, cast ye up, cast ye up, prepare the way, take up the stumbling block out of the way of my people. Don't hinder them, let them come. For thus saith the high and lofty one, capital O, that inhabiteth eternity, whose name is holy, capital H. I, God, dwell in a high and holy place with him also that is of a contrite and humbling spirit to revive the spirit of the humble and to revive the heart of the contrite one. He wants somebody who's contrite like David was. That means you're truly sorry for what you did. Then that matches the other night when we were talking about true repentance. you got to be broken hearted over your sin. You got to do it the next time you do it out of just pure ignorance and just just the thought of the moment that it happened. It ought not to be okay. I'm gonna I'm gonna do it now because I need it. That's not a contrite spirit. You're not trusting in the Lord. Makes oh, I'm nervous. I trust. You're not fearing God. And then when that whatever that God is. When he comes back and bites you in the butt, don't you start crying to God. For I, God, will not contend, contend forever. Neither will I be always wroth. For the spirit shall fail before me and the souls which I have made. So he's going to be showing mercy and love to Israel. He's not done with them. He's beating them across the behind, but then comes the hug and the loving. For the iniquity of his cov covetousness was I raw, and smote him. I hid me and was wroth, and he went on forwardly in the way of his heart. And the ways of men thereof are death. They walked not after God, they walked after what they believed. I have seen his ways. Behold the eyes of the Lord in every place, behold the evil and the good, and will heal him. 
Israel. I will lead him also and restore comforts unto him and to his mourner. So Israel is going to get relief. I create the fruit of the lips. Peace, peace to him that is far off. America, Russia, Australia, wherever they are. And to him that is near, Jerusalem, Jordan, saith the Lord. And I will heal him. There's healing coming to Israel. There's forgiveness coming to Israel. But. The wicked are like the troubled sea, when it cannot rest, whose waters cast up mire and dirt, filth, gunk. There is no peace, saith my God, to the wicked. God is angry with the wicked. God is angry with those that do not fear him. God is angry with those that turn away from him. Israel is in that state today. And yet God is not finished with Israel. The tribulation period is when Israel bends down on God's knee and whacks. Then there'll be called the time where he gets up. God will put his arms around him and love him still. God will only punish his children. That's tied, says in Hebrews. He says, not, you're a bastard. That's in the Bible. Those who are not God's children don't get chastisement. They get the lake of fire. That is their punishment. That is their time out. And God is not going to wrap his arms around them. And love them. As they burn for all eternity. I'd rather have my sins under the blood and have God chastise me as my father who loves me. Rather than keep on letting me go the way I'm going if I was lost. And to be cast off in the lake of fire with no hope. And these people are involved with things here. Which they don't say, oh, it, 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 there's no hope. You know, we keep doing it. We don't get no answers. We keep doing it. We don't get no relay. We keep doing it. And they won't turn to God because they don't fear him. And God has the answers. God has the comfort. Even all those that live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. Even with that, he'll give you a peace. That you can go through it. He'll give you joy. To bear it. And when you're all done, the righteous perish. You're taken up home. Glory to God. Absent from the body, be present with the Lord.